Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome Thomas House Family Shelter Executive Director Shakoya Green Long. The Garden Grove based organization's mission is to provide a safe, supportive environment and the resources necessary for homeless and at risk families with children to remain together while empowering them to become independent and self sufficient. Thank you, Shakoya, for being on Impact OC. Thank you so much, Don, for having me. Shakoya, please share with us how you're able to accomplish the organization's goals and how the Thomas House Shelter started. So Thomas House started 37 years ago by Mary and Bernie Sales. They walked outside of a Stater Brothers in Garden Grove, and there was a woman who was standing there with her baby, and the sign said homeless. And they took her home, her and her baby home with them, with their children, and they provided her with food, clothing, a good night's rest, things for her baby, and money to get back home to her family in Oklahoma. After doing this multiple times, they reached out to the individuals at their church and they said there was a larger need and hence Thomas House started. We are currently, we're located in the city of Garden Grove. We have initially, there were two apartment units that they rented and they rented out those units and they had multiple families in each room initially until they were able to purchase the two apartment, um, two 16, two eight unit complexes, which are connected they were able to continue to support the families there. And we provide case management, we provide pantry services, we provide parenting and life skill classes, youth development services, and career development services. Today, we have a total of 20 units. So in 2018, we expanded and purchased eight units across the street from the initial units in Garden Grove. And so today we have 20 units where we support over 60 families in our um, traditional, we have two core programs, our traditional shelter program, which includes all of the additional services. So we provide the case management weekly. They're required to budget. Individuals, we help get a job. Our goal is for individuals to become independent and self-sufficient. We ask them to pay for nothing everything is provided rent free and they are expected to save their funds pay off their debt and when they leave us have a little bit of money saved so that they can go into permanent housing and have some resources to take with them what are the demographics of the families I'm going to say we support about 75% um, Latina families, and we also support, there's 85% single women, and we are supporting about 65% of individuals or families that are fleeing domestic violence or are formerly um, domestic violence victims. Now, when you say single women, are they single women with children, though? Yes, single women with children. So we do support single women with children. You have to have a child under the age of 18. So single women, single dads, two-parent households, or multi-generational families. What are the causes of homelessness? You know what? It varies. The families that we're supporting, it's been a generational poverty issue, lack of resources coming from under-resourced communities, fleeing domestic violence is a large uh, part of our population that have come to Thomas House. Some of them are former um, substance abuse users, so they were former substance abuse users, and uh, they wanted to get themselves clean and and raise their children and, and become independent and learn those skills. Are all the skills taught at these shelters? Absolutely. So we have Thursday. Every parent is required to attend parenting class weekly. We have a class each week on Thursday evenings. We have financial literacy classes uh, every quarter, but we also have mental health. They're required to participate in individual counseling, um, required to um, also do family counseling if needed, because some of our children are uh, have been victims of sexual abuse or different types of abuse that they have experienced. And so we want to make sure that we are helping the families to address the unaddressed trauma that led them to get into this situation and help them to develop coping skills to move forward in life. Do the children realize what's going on? A lot of our children do. Right now we have a lot of teens, and so we do have a youth development program that focuses on um, the educational aspect with our kids. 
increasing their social emotional skills, also tutoring. We partner with Wheels on, um, Schools on Wheels that come out and provide tutoring for our uh, young people. But then we also have a teen case management aspect. And so what we focus on with our teens is really um, helping them to get on a track to a, either a trade, a career, go to college. We really want to teach them the skills that their parents are learning, the budgeting skills, the life skills, skills that the parents are learning now, because it's hard as you're learning things to also teach it to your kids. So we really want to make sure we are changing the trajectory. We are eradicating generational poverty and homelessness. How long are they to live in these living facilities? So prior to COVID, we had about a six month length of stay. Since COVID, it's been about a nine to 12 month length of stay that families are with us. So they stay and then you help them maneuver out. Yes, we help them move into permanent housing. So when a family moves into one of our units, the units are fully furnished. You walk into a nicely decorated place that you can call home while you are there. And when we help you find a place, find an apartment to move into, you're able to take furniture out of that unit and take that furniture into your new unit so that you have things and you're not trying to figure out how to purchase all the things that you need. Also, we have a homeless prevention program, and that program is designed for our graduate families. And we have that program because we want to make sure that families don't return. So they are, they receive case management. They receive pantry services. We also do linkage and referral. They also are able to receive emergency supports if needed. Say, for instance, something happens on their job. They get sick. We may need to help them pay a bill here or to support them in one way or another. But that's why it's important for them to stay connected and meet with that case manager a minute minimum of once a month so we can know what's going on and try and um, create a plan before things become an emergency. Now you say case management, explain what case management is. Case management is where you meet with an individual, complete a needs assessment, and then create a plan. And that plan helps you get to the ultimate goal of housing or staying housed. And so the case manager meets with you, basically work through those barriers, help connect you to different resources. So if it's the resume prep, she works with you on the resume prep. Um, If it's the interview skills, she works with you on interview skills. If it's connecting you to child care resources, connecting you to Medi-Cal so that you can get some benefits during this time where you're unemployed so that you can take care of your health um, health issues. So we try to really understand and address the whole person needs. So when they leave, they have the connection to all of those resources and support. Do you have paid staff or volunteers? So we have a very small team. We have nine paid staff and we have over 200 volunteers that support us. And what do the volunteers do? So we have volunteers that help stage our apartments, paint our apartments, help with pantry, help teach our life skills classes. So we've had different banks to come in and teach financial literacy. We also partner with other nonprofit organizations to teach behavioral management to the parents. And so our volunteers come in and they do birthday parties for the families. They provide Christmas gifts for the families, educational resources and supports. Um, Thomas House is very fortunate to have a huge huge volunteer base. They provide additional furniture that's needed. They help with our fundraisers. So we are always in need because we are a very small nonprofit, but we get the work done. I say we're a small and mighty team. Talk about fundraisers. You have an event coming up on June 16th. It's called Night in Paradise. Yes, yeah, so we do have we have a summer concert where our goal is to raise one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and those dollars will go to support our um, budget for this for the next fiscal years, which starts July first. The event is at the Marconi Auto Museum, and uh, tickets can be purchased on our website. And what's going to happen during that evening? So that evening we have Upstream Band. They are coming out to perform. We have some Polynesian dancers. We have silent auctions. We have food. There's a Hawaiian dinner that's being served. So it's it's a night of fun and fundraising so that we can raise the funds to support our unhoused families with children. How else are you funded? We are also funded, um, we are funded through foundations here, local foundations. We're also funded through Cal Optima, Cal AIM. So we did, um, we we were fortunate enough to just receive a grant through the Cal AIM uh, funding, which is a capacity grant that allowed us to hire two additional staff. So we will be 11 staff when we hire our career development person. So we we have our very first housing navigator uh, before our case managers did all of the housing navigation to link people to permanent housing. Now we have someone dedicated and that was um, 
we are fortunate to have that through a new uh, source through Cal Optima. Share with us at least one story of someone who's been through the program. So I can share with you, we had a young lady who graduated last year, and she came in, she had five children, she was, um, they had been in the foster care system, she had been in a rehab, she reunited with her children, she tells her story, and anybody can go and check it out, it's actually on our website, but she called us for about 60 days straight, because she wanted to move in, she wanted to really come into the program. She now works for Orange County, she has her children, her children are doing very well, she moved out and she had over $25,000 saved when she left our program. But she was with us for about 12, 12 uh, maybe about 12 months she was with us for about a year. And what percentage of the people who go through the program actually succeed? Uh, I'm going to say about 99% of our families um, succeed in one way or another. Uh, but I'm going to say about 95% of our families go into housing, go into permanent housing. Um, and of those, for our last fiscal year, 100% of those that graduated in 21-22 remained housing for a house for a year. And you're trying to change the thinking for the children so that they won't remain in the cycle of homelessness. Absolutely. And that is why there has been a huge um, focus on our teens and making sure that they are exposed and go to college tours. We have people coming in to meet with them to do different groups and different activities and with our uh, younger children as well. And we don't just focus on the 13 year olds. Our programs, our teen case management starts at 11. Um, if you look at the research there with COVID, there were more younger people also experiencing depression. And so we really are now focused on making sure kids are able to go to school school, not be stressed, to focus in school, and to be exposed to different things so that they can change that trajectory of their lives. And what are some of the options you provide to them to prevent these barriers from getting in the way? It's the teen case management program. It's financial literacy classes. It's also mental health counseling for the kids that we see that are struggling. It's also uh, schools on wheels tutoring. It's uh, working with our youth development coordinator, Brooklyn Allen, one-on-one -on -one with her city down and just really talking to them, really taking the time to work with them and then bringing the parents in and doing some joint sessions with them, joint case management sessions to make sure the parents are on the same page as well. Taking them, exposing them this past weekend, they were able to go out to a play. None of them had ever been to a theater and there was a play put on here in Orange County and so we paid for the family, for the children, younger, younger children to go see that play. So really the exposure for the children, taking them on college tours. Tours. We last summer we took them on a tour to Chapman University. Took a number of the kids, and we had a former. We had one of our staff who was a graduate um, of Chapman University, and so she connected us, and they were able to go on a tour of Chapman University. How do people who need help get to find out about your programs to get the services? So there's two, uh, a couple of different ways. So there's our website www.thomashouseshelter.org. 211 also provides individuals with our information and then you can also be referred through our hotline 714-647-7534. Give that number again please. 714-647-7534. So when they're referred to you what happens? So we do during normal business hours we have a live person answering our hotline and we ask a number of questions to see if it's an individual or if we're going to refer them out to somewhere else. We do not um, because you have to have a child. So we will do the research and try to find them somewhere else so if they do not have a child. But what we do is if we have an opening, we have a conversation with them, we invite them in. Because we have so many individuals who have... Um, fled domestic violence, we do lock shelter. Our, our doors lock at 7, at 10 p.m. Um, and so for safety reasons. And so some people don't want to participate in that type of a shelter. So we bring people on site, talk to them, let them see the shelter, explain to them what the shelter rules are, and see if, they, if they're interested. If we have an opening, then we can accept them into our program. So how do the parents feel knowing that their child will be taken care of mentally so that the child can succeed in the child's own right and enabling the parent to do the same. 
our parents are very, very happy. It's an adjustment period for some of them, but when it comes to them and knowing that their children are being supported and they have the resources and support to, to help them with their children, they are very excited and very happy. And we, I had someone today who has a camp that their children were going to before she came to Thomas House. She shared with the camp about Thomas House, and now the camp is willing to let us send 10 kids to camp for free. And this friend, camp is usually over $1,500 per child. So they, I have to say, they go out, they share about Thomas House to other people that they're talking to. They get, if they have family and that are not local, family have called in and have donated. And so they are very, very fortunate and very blessed. And it shows in the way that they share the information about Thomas House. And the people you serve, you wouldn't know they were homeless at one point? No, you would not know at all. We make sure that our families have, when they go out, we provide them with clothing. If they're going for a a job interview, they have all the clothes. We actually, just because it, the way you dress sometimes impacts the way you act. Um, And so we make sure even just around the shelter, we make sure that everybody has the things that they need, whether it's us going into emergency funds to purchase these things or from someone donating. You ever find that there's people just down on their luck? They may have had nice jobs and then all of a sudden they don't have anything anymore? Absolutely. We have a couple of individuals like that who had great jobs and ended up down on their luck, lost their job, lost their place to live. And it's we have a single dad in that situation. And so he is on the right track now. He found a job. He's been able to save some money. And we are going to be talking to him about his exiting strategy. So we talk about getting on the right track. Does it mean getting educated in a different field in order for them to get a successful job? Some of them will go to, we have a young lady who is actually graduating from Santa Ana Community College, and she is actually going on to UCR. Um, She graduates this spring. And so some of the families, yes, some of them, it means even getting a high school diploma because we have some families or some adults that come to us that don't have a high school diploma. Some of them, it's, um, we have some families that participate in the Buena Clinton Community Center ESL classes to improve their English. So we try to increase all the skills, skills in different areas based on what the individual is looking for. What has amazed you about the programs? Honestly, I've been a social worker for 23 years, and for me, the wraparound services, the supports that are provided, the supports that individuals that our board provides to our families and to Thomas House, our staff, we're a small team, but we get the work done. And, and, and I don't say that only because I worked there. Before I was there, Thomas House was succeeding and doing very, very well. And so it's for me, when I heard about it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And so just having the resources and the supports to be able to provide to families is great. I'm a former foster youth. Both of my parents were drug addicts. And so to have those resources is amazing. What are the biggest misconceptions people have about people who are homeless? There are many. For me is, oh, they don't want to do. They don't want to work. They don't want to go to school. For some, that may be the case. For the majority that I have had the experience to work with, that is not the case. It has been the lack of information, the lack of knowledge, the lack of resources. Uh, As they were growing up, things that they did not know about. Um, We have a couple of kids that will be first-time college students in their family. Um, We have one who's actually at Cal State Fullerton. She's a, her mom is a mother of two. Her mother did not go to college, did not know how to do the financial aid papers and things, but her daughter is in college. So it's lack of information, under-resourced communities, not having the resources and the supports that are necessary. Do you see your programs growing? Absolutely. I definitely see our programs growing. We just did a five-year strategic plan. last year, last fiscal year. And so this year was really us documenting our our services and getting our foundation firm, trying to grow, adding additional positions, which we have done. Our ultimate goal is in five years to be able to purchase another building and grow our services. Because here in Orange County, there's people down on their luck every single day. Absolutely, there is a huge need. There's a need to continue to um, to support people that are unhoused, not just families, That's our focus, but there is a huge need across the board. How can people help you? Uh, So we take donations of clothing, furniture. Um, The only thing we do not, (coughs) excuse me, the only thing we do not accept is mattresses. Uh, We take um, monetary donations as well. We have a We Are Thomas House um, 
program where if you give ten thousand dollars then your name goes on a plaque outside of the unit and you receive updates on the, that family quarterly and so that is another way for individuals to support us to attend our events to become a monthly donor um, to we do a campaign annually which just passed we do um, help them home which is with Orange County Community Foundation and so our goal is typically between one hundred and fifty thousand and two hundred thousand dollars and so that's another way to help what about volunteering Absolutely. Oh, we we always need volunteers helping to stage the units, helping with our pantry, helping to um, do an activity with the kids. If you love children and you want to provide an activity, then come on out and provide an activity. On Thursday nights, we do supper serving with our families, and we do that because parents are required to attend parenting classes. And so what we don't want parents trying to run in and get dinner ready. So we provide supper outside in the youth development program for the adults and the children so that adults can get their meals go up to parenting uh, youth can stay downstairs with either a volunteer group who's doing an activity or with staff who's doing an activity with them and we provide supper so thursday suppers are very popular and very much needed and what goes on in your mind when you see graduates Oh, it warms my heart. It makes my heart smile to see people graduate um, and then to come back and continue to participate or share their stories in our parenting classes. So we have had a couple of individuals that have done that. We also have a graduate that's a part of our staff and we have a graduate that's on our board. And do you find a lot of graduates will come back and share their stories? Absolutely. Yes. Over the years, Thomas House has had a number of graduates. Uh, during my first year, several people came during our Thanksgiving dinner. So I started in June of 21. And so every year, the Hyatt in Garden Grove will come out and do a Thanksgiving dinner or it will be at the Hyatt. And so with th- with COVID, that did not happen. And so when our first, we did it back in November of 2021, we had several graduates that came back out. And we're just happy to be back because Thomas House is like a family. The um, sister Kathy Stein, who was the former executive director, she was with Thomas House for 18 years. When I started, she came out, she now lives in LA. She sat down with me, talked to me about the organization, talked to me about the program. I had the opportunity to sit with Mary Sales and have a conversation with her. It's really a close knit grassroots organization. So it's living up to the expectations. Absolutely, absolutely. And so you envision this growing and helping the homeless problem in Orange County. Absolutely, helping unhoused families with children. The terminology, I'm using, hearing the term unhoused as opposed to homelessness. What, what's the correct term? Unhoused. Unhoused. Okay, so that's the term that we need to do. Okay, again, you have the event June 16, Night in Paradise Summer Concert. How can people get information about it? People can email me, Shakoya at thomashouseshelter.org and at Shakoya, S H A K O Y A, at thomashouseshelter.org or go onto our website at www.thomashouseshelter.org. So, how does your organization compare to other homeless organizations? I'm going to say, are you? We are very unique because families get their own apartments. Our goal is we support women and men um, in the same, not living in the same unit, but in our same complex. Um, and then we we do provide all of the wraparound services. So I would say that is what what is unique about Thomas House. And so people who get involved with that, then they are able to live on their own successfully. Absolutely. The ultimate goal is to move out and to be independent in their own permanent housing. And you have people who check on them afterwards, right? Yes, we do. We have a case manager who is a part of the Homeless Prevention Program. And that is where you continue to get the support from Thomas House to make sure you stay housed. So what an experience they have gone through if they go through your program and then they succeed absolutely it's it's a huge experience and it's um it's life-changing it is a life-changing experience because you're gaining those skills that you did not the budgeting skills the cooking learning how to parent your children in the appropriate way um getting your mental health addressed um because if you are if you have been homeless or been unhoused then you have experienced some level of trauma being unhoused is trauma and so you want to address that trauma and develop coping skills while you continue on this thing called life not to mention the volunteers probably get a lot out of it as well. 
Oh, absolutely. Our volunteers love to come out and they love to interact with the families, like the supper servings on Thursday. That is one of the things they love to do or to see the home uh, help decorate it and put their little touch to it, come out and help clean. We had a volunteer group out from Hyundai and they helped move one family from one unit to another unit. And so it was, they loved it, helped clean the unit, helped actually meet with some of the children. And so it's, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to see the impact that you can have by supporting the families at Thomas House. Well, thank you, Thomas House Family Shelter Executive Director Shakoya Greenlong for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC. The only program, Shokogram, Shokogram, showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.